Welcome to Real Estate Focus. I'm Kelvin Law. Today, our topic is newly implemented flood maps by FEMA. Here with me today is my guest, Claudio Sala. He is the registered land surveyor um, with over 25 years of experience, and he performs uh, land surveying um, throughout Massachusetts. And he's here today to talk about um, elevation uh, certificates and also um, what most sellers will need to do uh, to get flood insurance premiums from the insurance companies and uh, with the new flood maps throughout uh, Massachusetts and also um, on coastal properties. Um, this is one of the impo important topics uh, to talk about. So therefore, um, it will affect a lot of uh, current owners, uh, future owners, and also um, a lot of sellers and buyers out there. Well, thank you for being here, Claudio. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, I know we'll be only scratching the surface, but hopefully your viewers will get a little better understanding of the I'm female sure, I'm sure they will. Yep. So um, having said that, now, um, when the, uh, the homeowner um, would like to, um, you know, um, contact you for um, getting um, either a elevation certificate uh, or doing you know land surveying uh, so that uh, they are able to get uh, the proper codes from the insurance company uh, so what is the um, what is the process and we're going to talk about it later on however um, the first question is uh, what is a, a what is a flood insurance remap uh, basically um, their uh, maps uh, produced by FEMA which um, show the um, difference, differences in elevations of mm -hmm. certain flood areas um, throughout the state and, and they're actually produced throughout the country uh, in most areas that are populated. Um, so during a what is called a hundred year storm event, they, FEMA sets an, a certain elevation mm -hmm. where that right. um, uh, the flooding will reach. Mm -hmm. um, and those are used in the elevation certificates to um, to see what the risks um, right. of each structure are, mm -hmm. and and the the, the, the maps that uh, the remap that we, we we are talking about here um, is a, they have to be approved by FEMA. Is that is that correct? The maps are produced by FEMA. Okay. Um, and they're they're basically um, they basically show like a say a two square mile area right. of a right. of of a city or town mm -hmm. um, and it shows the streets and the houses and mm -hmm. in relation to the flood elevations right. and the limits of those flood elevations i see um, Interesting. Yep. if you if you want to check to see if your home is is in a um, a fema flood zone you can go to uh, fema.gov mm -hmm. and you sort of navigate through the um, website and mm -hmm. uh, you can actually go to the um, Map Service Center, and then by inputting your address into the the search block, um, mm -hmm. it will give you the map, and then you can zoom into the area and see your structure. Mm -hmm. And if it's in a shaded area, or it's in the floodplain. If it's out outside of the shaded area, or it's mm -hmm. not in the floodplain. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah, good to know. And um, with the new changes right now in different uh, areas, um, um, what are the changes to the maps uh, we have been hearing about? Uh, we can share a little bit uh, about the changes uh, of different flood maps in Massachusetts. Yes, um, the major changes are the elevations. Mm -hmm. um, FEMA has increased um, in ideal mostly in Plymouth County and Norfolk mm -hmm. County. Um, FEMA has increased some of the coastal elevations as much as three or four feet. Mm. Um, that's a lot. Mm. That's that's a huge amount, mm -hmm. um, and that has caused a lot more homeowners or structures mm -hmm. to be in the floodplain mm -hmm. than were they were not before. Mm -hmm. um, it also has increased the risk of some homes. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, if, you're, if your flood elevation was here and all of a sudden it's up, up here, mm -hmm. your home is more at risk of flooding and mm -hmm. therefore your insurance goes up. Mm -hmm. um, they have also increased insurance rates, mm -hmm. which right. doesn't help. Doesn't help, no. <laughs> And so when you, when you talk about uh, flood elevations, you mean 
um, you mean the water table content has has is, has rise or is going to be expected to rise? Is that is that? Oh no. Um, most of the changes have occurred in the coastal areas, mm -hmm. and basically it's due to global changes. FEMA has a criteria that they use to estimate mm -hmm. um, during a coastal storm mm -hmm. um, how high the waves will be, how high the ocean will rise, mm -hmm. and how far inland those um, those floodplain mm -hmm. areas will come. Mm -hmm. um, and this is one of the examples out there? Yes. Um, that is one of the, f the 2012 maps. Um, as you can see, the one of the bigger areas is the zone AE area, which has an elevation of 10. Mm -hmm. um, it goes from what is there is Wollaston Beach, Quincy Shore Drive, all the way to Gordon Street. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very large area. So mm -hmm. um, if the w water were to rise over, over the seawall, it would come mm -hmm. down there, those areas and inundate all those houses, mm -hmm. um, all those homes uh, would flood. Mm -hmm. and, um, so basically, you know, based on a, um, the, the, the blue um, um, uh, dots right there, um, if, if, if the, 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 the homeowner found um, their property happened to be in the flood zone, and that's, that's how they found it, right? By looking at those yes, you can blue actually, dots. Yes, you okay. can actually see the structures, mm -hmm. um, each house, and the, the blue shaded area with mm -hmm. the dots is the flood zone area. Mm -hmm. Right, and in terms of um, um, the maps. Um, do you know when those uh, new maps will take effect? Uh, actually, since we last spoke, um, the maps have taken effect. Uh, mm -hmm. As of June 6, 2014, mm -hmm. um, we have the new maps in, in effect. Mm -hmm. um, there were some. There was an appeal made by some um, federal legislatures, mm -hmm. uh, legislators, mm -hmm. to have FEMA hold off. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that didn't work, mm -hmm. um, or at least. It, maybe it hasn't been processed. So if, if that happens in the future, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. But that's a very possibility, very mm -hmm. good possibility. And mm -hmm. if that in that case, uh, FEMA may readjust their maps and lower their, the flood elevations. Mm -hmm. um, but no, knows, way right? no, no, right, no way to know. Right, right. No, nothing's guaranteed. So <coughs> in terms of um, um, the new changes now, um, how the new maps uh, changed um, in terms of elevations? I mean, how do they determine um, certain elevations in certain areas uh, of the floodplain, if you will? Well, um, again, higher insurance rates, mm -hmm. um, if you already have insurance, mm -hmm. and um, new people coming into the, the program mm -hmm. that never had insurance mm -hmm. before are now, will now be required to purchase it. Mm -hmm. um, basically, if you have a mortgage, your lender can um, require you to purchase flood insurance to protect okay. themselves. Right. Um, if you don't purchase the flood insurance, they will purchase it for you. Um, it's going to be more expensive, right? Federal law allows them to do that, right. yes. And they will not, they will just charge you the highest rate. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't want that to happen. Right. And, and, right. and the elevation certificate is one of the ways that you can help adjust those insurance mm -hmm. rates um, right. lower them. Okay. And if you will, um, uh, just just you know, walk us through in terms of uh, what are the classes of um, or levels of flood zones, if you will, like X, you know, versus E A versus A O V E C. You know, I can uh, just to name a few, if you will. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, major ones. Um, there's the zone A E, um, which you can see is the major mm -hmm. um, flood area, the larger one. Uh, you know, on this map, um, basically that's an area where the flood water just rises and, and mm -hmm. lowers mm -hmm. um, naturally. Mm -hmm. um, then you have, what, I don't think we have one here on this map, but on mm -hmm. the other one we did, we have what is called a V zone, mm -hmm. um, VE. I think it's up there. Uh, yes, yeah. VE of elevation 14. Mm -hmm. The V stands for velocity, mm -hmm. which means that those zones are subject to wave action. Mm -hmm. Um, so if your structure in is, is in a V zone, that means it can be hit by waves. Mm. So no, not only will it flood, but it, will, it can also be damaged mm. by the force of the ocean. Right. Um, so those premiums in V zones, in V zone areas, are astronomically higher. Mm. Obviously, mm. Um, we have there. We also see the AO zone mm -hmm. um, that has come back from 
prior flood maps. I haven't seen it in a while. Mm -hmm. um, those areas of, say, right after the seawall um, or any structure that blocks the waves, mm -hmm. where the water would come over, spill over, and sort of roll. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're not giving you an elevation there. They're saying depth of two feet. Mm -hmm. So over that seawall, the water will flow mm -hmm. slowly, mm -hmm. um, but it will be moving, mm -hmm. and it will be about two feet deep. Right. Um, and the zone X's, there, there is zone X shaded and unshaded. Mm -hmm. In this case, we only have a, well, we do have some unshaded. It's mm -hmm. between the blue line and the black line in the mm -hmm. AE zone. Mm -hmm. um, that's the shaded area. That's areas of very minimal flooding mm -hmm. do not require flood insurance. So the low risk? Very low the risk. The lowest one? Yes. Okay. And that's very minimal mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. flooding. Right. And then the X zone, um, which is outside here, I don't think we see it, but it's everywhere else right. is an X zone, yep. um, which does not require, that's extremely minimal flooding, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. does not require flood insurance at all. Right. So that is, that is the EA, is that right? AE. AE. Okay, I'm sorry. So yeah, they, they, the A mm -hmm. zones, I, I'm not quite sure what the E's, they have right. AE and A1, right. A2. Right. Um, but the A zone is the basic flood zone that rises and falls. Right. The water rises and falls, mm -hmm. but doesn't move laterally. So what about the C zone? Is there a C zone as well? Um, two map revisions ago, they, oh, okay. the, flood, the zones were A, B, C. Okay. Much right. simpler back then. Um, <laughs> a zone was flooding. Right. B zone, oh, they had V. B yeah. zone was uh, minimal flooding, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. C zone was no flooding. And they I had see. the V zone at the time yeah. also, which right. was the wave action. I see. Okay. And, um, and so this, um, I would call um, levels or classes, pretty much uh, stay the same in terms of usage, but, you know, I mean, uh, based on the new maps. So like A, you know, EA or something like that, the terms are used same as four years ago or five years ago, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. It's slightly different from, say, 10 years, uh, nine, I think 1992 mm -hmm. were the prior maps to the 2012. Mm -hmm. Those were the ABC. Mm -hmm. um, but since then, it's standard is changed into the A, and I think, I think people are getting used to it. Right, right, okay, <coughs> great. And um, in terms of uh, um, the uh, elevation certificate, now what is the purpose for people to get the um, elevation certificate? Uh, again, the, the elevation certificate um, will help the um, insurance agent classify the structure and calculate, I think it, what they're calculating is a risk factor. Mm -hmm. um, how risky is your structure? How risk is it to flood? Mm -hmm. right. um, basically, if, you, if, if, you, if you're flood, flooding six feet mm -hmm. in, your, in your yard, mm -hmm. that's a high risk house, mm -hmm. your insurance will be higher than if it's only flooding one foot. Mm -hmm. um, so the elevation certificate uh, lists elevations of, say, the basement floor, mm -hmm. first floor, um, or lowest floor, they call it, so mm -hmm. not necessarily the basement floor. Mm -hmm. um, the mechanicals, like your furnace, hot water heater, they ask mm -hmm. for the lowest mechanical, mm -hmm. um, electrical panel, mm -hmm. air conditioning units, mm -hmm. central air. Mm -hmm. um, those, are, those are mechanicals that are required for the house to function. If those were to flood, mm -hmm. you would put in a claim to FEMA to have them replaced. Mm -hmm. and so they, they become a risk factor. Mm -hmm. um, the other issues, the other things, um, basically the house is described, its location is described by, mm -hmm. um, we have a copy of it here, mm -hmm. is described by coordinates, uh, by the legal location. Mm -hmm. um, we classify the house on the elevation certificate based on the di uh, set of diagrams that FEMA has. Um, they can, there's a set of nine diagrams, so we try to classify it if you have a full basement or if you have a slab on grade or crawl space. Um, we also, there's also places for the square footage of, of this, the foundation. If you have an attached garage, the square footage of the garage. And then we list uh, the map numbers that the structure is found on, mm -hmm. um, the zone that it's in, the elevation of that flood zone. Mm -hmm. And then we get into the elevations of the actual uh, lowest floor, next floor, garage floors, mm -hmm. um, mechanicals, and the highest and lowest grade outside the house. Um, the theory is if, if the flooding rises, mm -hmm. but 
it doesn't quite reach your house, mm -hmm. then your house is not at risk as much. Right. It may be flooding from underneath, but mm -hmm. not from groundwater, but not from flooding. Right. right. Um, and now they also ask for the lowest grade of, mm -hmm. of a deck or mm -hmm. stairs, anything mm -hmm. that could be damaged. I see. And so, um, <coughs> do you have to have the elevation certificate in order for, in order for um, the homeowners to get a quote from the insurance company? From what I understand, it is now required um, mm -hmm. to have an elevation certificate to get a quote. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, all they can do is give you the highest right. um, premium, mm -hmm. the highest risk. Right, okay, without the um, elevation certificate? Without the elevation okay. certificate, right. Okay. It's, just, it's just an estimate if that's the case. It would be whatever their maximum rates. I don't know how they exactly okay. work it, okay. but it would be, yes, the maximum they could um, okay. yep. charge you. Okay, so, um, and who is allowed to complete the form? Uh, is, it, is it complete by you, or can it be complete by the, uh, the owner and yourself, or how does it work in terms of completing the, uh, completing the, uh, the form? Yep. Um, um, a registered land surveyor mm -hmm. um, in any state can complete the forms. Mm -hmm. They also allow registered engineers and registered architects who are familiar with elevation certifications. Mm -hmm. So not all engineers and architects are familiar with mechanical engineer wouldn't be doing it. Mm -hmm. Civil engineer, maybe. Mm -hmm. Architects, I'm not quite sure about, but <laughs> they do allow architects. Right, right. Um, It's not like their expertise, right? <laughs> it's not really right, their expertise, right. and I, I don't know that they have the equipment to do right, it. Right, right, right. Um, th there is also a section in the form, mm -hmm. that, um, and actually I didn't get into that. There are A zones now on mm -hmm. the FEMA maps, mm -hmm. um, and those A zones are not studied by FEMA, mm -hmm. so they don't have a, an elevation. Mm -hmm. they, they, um, th they can't give you an elevation, so there's not much that the, f the elevation certificate can do, mm -hmm. um, we do list all the elevations anyway, and if you can calculate a flood, a flood elevation, then they can work with that. But mm -hmm. in those cases where it's an A zone with no elevation, the homeowner um, can fill in a certain section of the form, um, and that's simply by measuring up f you know, from the ground to their first floor, mm -hmm. and from the ground outside to the, to the f basement floor, mm -hmm. and filling in the appropriate boxes in the section. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't seen that help anyone, but mm -hmm. it can be done. <laughs> it can be done, you right. Can, you right. never know. Anything is possible, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, in terms of results uh, from the, um, the survey, I mean, can there be differences uh, um, in results between surveyors? Uh, so if, you, if you've done a, uh, a survey that um, maybe the, the ground a little bit higher or lower than the other ones, I mean, uh, what, what can you do? I mean, what the owner, owner should do if that's the case? Differences by surveyors? Um, hopefully not. Right. Um, hopefully not, right? With the right equipment. <laughs> right. Um, there are what are called benchmarks right. throughout the state uh, set over the last hundred years and rechecked. Mm -hmm. um, there are permanent marks set in concrete bridges or mm -hmm. uh, in stone posts. Mm -hmm. um, they should not be moving up and down. Um, mm -hmm. We try to find those and we by survey we go from those to the house mm -hmm. and measure the land so mm -hmm. any other surveyor should be using a similar benchmark or mm -hmm. if not the same one mm -hmm. to do the same property mm -hmm. um, and should come up with a reasonably um, mm -hmm. similar elevation I mean w within an inch or so some mm -hmm. some houses you know tend to lean mm -hmm. they're a little crooked mm -hmm. um, so what do you use the front uh, the front of the house or the back of the house but mm -hmm. you know within a few inches they should all be the same mm -hmm. however errors are made so, mm. so basically, are there any, any codes that you should follow as a surveyor when you do the um, you know, elevation certificate or, you know, or measuring the ground or something like that? Um, well, in Massachusetts, surveys are governed by um, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Regulations 250 CMR 6.0. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So any survey must conform to those regulations. The accuracy standards um, must be maintained, and that's mm -hmm. for the elevation certificate. I don't mm -hmm. think FEMA has any requirements, although they do that, say that elevations mm -hmm. must be taken, right. you know, according to mm -hmm. um, surveying practice. Right, right. Okay. <coughs> so um, now, in terms of uh, premiums, because this is a very important question for uh, you know sellers, uh, homeowners, buyers, future buyers. Um, can there? I mean, um, the question is. What can they 
do to 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 uh, reduce the insurance premium uh, as a you know homeowner or a seller. Um, the simplest thing mm -hmm. um, is probably to get an elevation certificate. That's um, the number one thing. That would probably be the, the first step. The first step. Yep. Right. Um, if you haven't had one done. Mm -hmm. um, get an elevation certificate done and go see your insurance agent. Mm -hmm. Let him plug those numbers in um, to their program and see if the new rate comes out any lower. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, if you want to go further, mm -hmm. um, probably the easiest things are um, the mechanicals. Mm -hmm. If your mm -hmm. mechanicals are in the basement, mm -hmm. they're obviously going to flood if you're in a flood zone. Mm -hmm. um, you can bring those upstairs. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. in the first floor. Mm -hmm. If your first floor is above the floodplain, you can put them upstairs. The heating systems um, right there, right? Yes, yeah. new, mm -hmm. new heating systems are right. smaller. Yeah. They're actually even in the basement, if, you, mm -hmm. if only half the basement floods, mm -hmm. you can hang the new heating system from the ceiling. No kidding. Okay. So they're, they're only three feet oh, tall. Oh, like it's new instead systems, of sitting basically. Them on the ground, yeah, they, they, they can attach them up hang to the wall. Them. Okay, um, right, right. A lot of people move them up to the attic. Right, so small. If right. it's a if it's a hot water system, mm -hmm. you know, run by gas. Obviously, right. not a, not an oil fired one. Right. But, um, <laughs> run by gas. You can put right. it in the attic or a I crawl see. or a crawl space in the eaves. Mm -hmm. um, water heaters. Mm -hmm. um, they have now the on demand water heaters, mm -hmm. which are tankless. You can bolt them to the wall. Mm -hmm. Stick them in the broom closet. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I've seen that. Mm -hmm. Right. Air conditioning units can easily come up. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen people build platforms mm -hmm. and put them on. Right. And we've also done small additions mm -hmm. to the side of the house, mm -hmm. simply for utility rooms. Mm -hmm. um, just build a little addition on posts and put all your mechanicals in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not cheap, um, yeah. but, but it can be in done. the long run, if it yeah. saves you $1,000 a year right. in premiums, yeah. um, it right. can be done and you don't have the headache of having to replace it, move out. Right. So your point is the less the mechanical in the basement, the better, is that right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Simply put, right? Okay. Um, it, should we go on? I mean, we can go further. Um, if you want, yeah, briefly, if you will. Uh, yeah. Briefly, okay. Yeah, yes. um, the next step would be to raise your house. Raise the house, okay. Um, you mean in terms of foundations or in terms of... Uh, the entire house. The entire house. Well, they, what they do is they, they can actually raise the house and right. then you build a new foundation underneath, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is higher, which is higher in, or over the flood elevation. Mm -hmm. um, you've seen a lot of them in, as pile foundations mm -hmm. or you can mm -hmm. build a conventional concrete foundations with the openings. Mm -hmm. um, and then they just they jack it up and then they put it right back down on the mm -hmm. foundation. Now, mm -hmm. you still have to pay your flood insurance. Mm -hmm. You're still in the floodplain, mm -hmm. but because your entire house is up over the floodplain, it won't flood, mm -hmm. your premium is lower. the minimum. Right, I see. Your foundation is only at risk. Right, and but what about what about zoning? I mean, uh, for example, if, if the, the house is located, uh, you know, in a uh, severe flood zone level, even though, you know, the house has been jacked up or raised, I mean, would that change any, anything? I mean, uh, in terms of premiums and also, you know, the level of the flood zone in that floodplain? Well, the flood zone is set. Right. I mean, it can change again, I, ass I assume. <laughs> More global warming. Uh, um, you, you mentioned zoning. I, mm -hmm. uh, there are zoning issues to deal with. Right, Maximum right. building heights right. and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, we've done quite a few in the last 20 years, mm -hmm. and the Zoning Board of Appeals usually looks very favor favorably on a homeowner trying to get their house out of the floodplain. Uh, mm -hmm. They grant the waivers and the, mm -hmm. the variances um, pretty much on, you know, mm -hmm. in every case. I don't mm -hmm. think I've seen a case where they've denied mm -hmm. the, the person the right to raise their house. Right, right. Okay, so um, anything is possible except, you know, it comes down to costs, if you will. Yes. Yeah, so... Cost okay. is a big issue. Right, okay. <laughs> now, uh, are there any programs to help homeowners um, uh, with cost reduction uh, of flood risks? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. um, there, were, there was a good program uh, by FEMA mm -hmm. years ago where they would give you a grant. I think it was up to $20,000 mm -hmm. to move your mechanicals up, even raise your house. Mm -hmm. And then they would also, on top of that, give you low interest loans. Um, about six years ago, they've um, cut, they put a restriction on that. They've required homeowners to um, put a restriction on their deed saying that they would purchase flood insurance from there on in, even after their mortgage was uh, paid off. 
Mm -hmm. um, that kind of dwindled that program. Mm -hmm. um, I'm told now, recently they've they've also added a further restriction. That is, if you want the if you want the grant, you have to use the existing equipment. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to put a 20 year old furnace upstairs, mm -hmm. move it upstairs, or an old water heater. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it could be done, but mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's feasible. So that program right. sort of died. Mm -hmm. um, the city of Quincy's housing rehab office was administering those. Um, and they still do it. If, if mm -hmm. people want to look into it, you can mm -hmm. uh, do that. Um, mm -hmm. But And they do also have their own programs, mm -hmm. um, which they give homeowners grants um, and um, small grants and mm -hmm. loans, low interest loans, mm -hmm. uh, for any renovation. So mm -hmm. you can use that portion of the housing rehab office to um, mm -hmm. you know, help you with your FEMA premiums. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, th there are income restrictions for right. those, however, so I it's see. not for everyone. Right, it's not for everyone, that's right. And that, is that the government program, is that correct? It's the city um, administers it on, out of the mm -hmm. re, um, Housing Rehabilitation Office, mm -hmm. which is in City Hall, mm -hmm. um, and I think it is money that is a grant from HUD. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly mm -hmm. where the money comes from, but mm -hmm. you can call the Housing Rehab Office. Mm -hmm. Tony will be happy to mm -hmm. tell right. you everything about it. <clears throat> I'm sure. Now, in terms of um, you know, having a surveyor uh, to perform the uh, elevation certificate, uh, just, just give a range, if you will. Um, how much would it cost the homeowner to you know, have something like this done? Um, well, we're in Quincy, so in Quincy, I have a lot more benchmarks than mm -hmm. other towns mm -hmm. um, since I'm local. Uh, typically, if, if it's not too far away from around mm -hmm. $385, $400, mm -hmm. um, and obviously the further I have to survey to a from a benchmark to the house, the cost increases um, mm -hmm. on the higher end, maybe six, seven, eight hundred dollars mm -hmm. I see. Um, outside of Quincy, they're, they're usually in the five to eight hundred dollar mm -hmm. range. So what is the uh, average time that will take you to uh, complete the whole survey? Uh, I can probably, from the time the owner calls and gives me the notice to proceed, um, assuming I can find a benchmark, um, probably about a week and a half. Mm -hmm. If I'm if I'm really busy, right, um, right, I see. Maybe two or three weeks, but mm -hmm. about that's a week the mass. Yeah. Okay. So when you when you said benchmark, what is that? I mean, um, I mean, in, in in your surveying term, if yeah, of I, course. I, <laughs> um, yeah, as I said before, it's it's basically a a solid non-moving object mm. um, of known elevation. The mm -hmm. government, um, the United States Geological Survey and the Massachusetts Highway Department mm -hmm. would set these in bridges and right. water towers and things mm -hmm. like that in a concrete base or, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. in a granite post stuck in the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and usually it's a brass disc mm -hmm. and it'll give the point, the, mm -hmm. the identification of the point and the elevation mm -hmm. and those don't move. So mm -hmm. when you go to it, you know that it's a known elevation mm -hmm. that you can start from and um, they're throughout the state. They get disturbed, they get destroyed mm -hmm. uh, by construction mm -hmm. and things like that and mm -hmm. they're harder to find. Mm -hmm. um, now we do also have the uh, technology mm -hmm. GPS right, right. Um, where we can use satellites. So 